So today's talk is the first talk of many, many, probably will end up being about 30 plus uh, over the course of now through July, uh, trying to keep people engaged in music all summer long, lots of different master classes. I've already added a couple more and we'll have about three a week. So this one is particularly about auditioning, applying and getting accepted to a music school. Um, so kind of the, the big four steps when picking, uh, kind of going to school for music is deciding what school, obviously, auditioning, <clears throat> applying, which is a lot of music schools have an application process specifically for the school, and then you have to apply for the school of music, and then kind of extra skills that you should work on if you are in high school looking to go to college for music. So some of this stuff, I've gotten through my my teaching experience and some of the even like the extra skill stuff were recommended to me when I was in high school to help prepare me for uh, a career in music. So going to the next slide, school selection. So there's two big majors that usually are at most music schools, music education, and music performance. And there are a lot of other majors available to you music business, music management, composition, music therapy, music production and engineering, electronic production and design, and kind of the, that's kind of a short list. There's probably about five or six more that a lot of the bigger schools have. But if you're gonna pick one of these other majors, um, I definitely recommend kind of also doing music, educa music education um, because it's gonna be easier for you to get a job right out of college. Um, that's one thing you kind of have to think about. Performance wise, normally you'll end up trying to get an orchestra job, which is difficult, or you'll be going straight into your master's. It's much easier to get work right after college when you go for a music education degree. Um, kind of kind of starting locally and kind of spreading out to your music school options. So uh, we're based in West Palm Beach, so kind of within a 50 mile radius of West Palm Beach. Uh, we got Kaiser, we have FAU, PBS, PBA, and conservatory wise is Lynn University. And then in-state, this is only like a, a short little list. Obviously there's many, many more universities and colleges in the state that have music, but these are some of the big ones. FSU, uh, University of Florida, University of South Florida, Everyone likes to have University of something in their name. University of Central Florida, FAMU, FIU, FMU, uh, University of West Florida, BCU, and then kind of, I definitely recommend exploring out-of-state options. Uh, so this is, these are just a couple that are really, really high ranked in terms of music education. Uh, third on that list was Ithaca, actually. Then it went Indiana University and Northwestern. Northwestern. Um, according to this article, has about a hundred percent job rate, placement rate, for their graduates in their music education program. And one of the things you want to look at, at when you are applying to a school is what their job rate is for students coming right out of the school. Um, in terms of out-of-state performance degrees, uh, I'm from New Jersey, so I have a lot of knowledge of like that Northeast area. Uh, one of the biggest performance conservatories type schools are Juilliard, which is in New York, Curtis Institute of Music in PA, Berkeley College of Music in uh, Massachusetts, Cleveland Institute of Music, Peabody Conservatory, Eastman School of Music. Um, I've known people that have attended all of these schools. Um, going to a, a conservatory style school is a much more intense experience if that's what you're looking for. Um, it's more demanding, obviously, in the, the performance aspect, um, a lot of ensemble experience that you'll need, and the audition requirements tend to be much, much more, more rigorous. Um, kind of thinking about, once you kind of compile that list and you've made some initial decisions, kind of think if you would prefer uh, a, a bigger university that will have large class sizes or a smaller university um, because they have different experiences when you're going for undergrad. 
if you're if you're if you're used to that uh, being in a band program in high school that has a lot of students in it and you really enjoy that experience and you think that it will help you get a job in the long run I definitely suggest looking there when you're making these lists of schools I would say pick a couple that are small and a couple that are large because once you go through that whole process of picking your colleges you'll there will be things that you like about either one and then that you'll have a, a, a much more well-rounded picture of what is possible for undergrad education. Uh, normally in a, a smaller school, you'll have more interaction with your teacher, more individualized attention, and depending what your background is, uh, the, the growth potential is much more because of that. Uh, some colleges um, don't require any private lessons experience Normally, uh, if you're going for a community college or some of the public institutions, definitely you're gonna if you're gonna try to go into a conservative school, you need private lessons if you're gonna get in, because those audition requirements are more intense. And usually, uh, I'll give you an example like Curtis Institute of Music, only has enough instrumentalists to uh, produce an orchestra. So that means that there'll be two clarinet spots that'll last about four years. So that's like a really, really um, extreme case. Uh, I don't know of anyone that has gotten into that level of school without any kind of applied lesson help. Uh, obviously, you need to look into what the school costs. So that's a big thing. Um, but even, even if you have a school that costs, like a private institution, like Kaiser, um, one of the great things is private institutions tend to also offer more scholarship. So we offer really large merit-based scholarships and the, the, the band scholarship is one of the largest in the countries. So when you're evaluating this, so give me, I'll, I'll make up an, an example. Say you're, going to, you're looking at a university, a private university in Maryland that costs, I don't know, $46,000 a year. And you look at that, you really love the school, but how are you gonna afford 46 grand? But as you go through this process and you investigate a little bit more, you realize that they offer you 13 grand in merit because you have a high GPA. And then there's uh, a performance scholarship and then you also qualify other for other scholarships, so then that brings it down to actually less than what you would pay for a public institution. So don't disregard, don't kind of like get rid of th these expensive schools just because that starting price is expensive. Um, obviously in the long run, once you're, you're making your final decision, you have to decide what you can afford. I definitely recommend not kind of going to a school that is beyond your means because what will happen is you'll go a semester you won't be able to pay the bill at the end of that semester and then you're going to be in trouble because they're going to want that money back and then you're going to end up going to a different school that fits better with your financial situation so that's a, that's another huge thing so you need to start prepping for your college audition now this is especially as a, a junior a lot of the auditions are going to be obviously with everything going on um, they might be postponed or pushed up depending on the particular institution um, but some some auditions are are as early as november december and a lot of like the conservatory schools are january february so whether your music education or music performance all of them require all major scales, um, a solo piece, and then when you get solo piece or pieces, and then um, when you get into conservatory schools, you get into the orchestral excerpts. Um, so, when you're if you, if you're going for one of these conservatory schools, you make sure that you study with a private lesson teacher that has experience in orchestra, or can help prepare you for those orchestra excerpts. Or you might need to find someone else that is more knowledgeable about orchestral literature to kind of guide you in the right direction. So some of the things you need to look at in terms of uh, 
regular practicing. If you have, especially with a technical piece, start slowly. Start really slowly. There's no need to rush to play it at the tempo when you have when especially when you're starting now when you have five or six months to prepare and that really gives you time to make it the best performance that you can prepare in that amount of time so musicality intonation rhythm tone make sure you listen to lots of recordings of your audition pieces um, practice the problems areas first it's a little, obviously it's a lot of fun to play the stuff that you can play well but as a musician you want to you want to kind of start with the things that you're bad at and then once you kind of master that or at the end of your practice session, then kind of finish that with some stuff that you really enjoy. So that keeps you motivated. Um, and that bottom point, build up speed slowly. So the more time you spend really perfecting it at a slow tempo, the sooner you'll be able to play it fast with high accuracy. And that's the thing. You want to be able to go into your college audition without a question that you're going to be able to play all your scales and the solo literature to the best of your ability. So play regularly for your private teacher, band director, band directors, fellow classmates, family. So the more little kind of performance opportunities you can have, the easier it will be for you to do this audition. And uh, you know, a lot of kids that are looking at music in college have done solo ensemble and they've audition for all state and stuff like that so you'll have that under your belt but college auditions for some are more stressful so if you can put yourself in these kind of like even if even early in the audition rep prep try to play for people just so you can kind of because obviously when you're less prepared you're more nervous so then you get used to dealing with that uh, excitement and anxiousness and then you're able to calm down and still produce a high quality audition. So obviously we kind of talked about like the music department requirements. Um, normally when you're applying to a school for music, you have to apply to the school and also to the music department. Um, so the, the school will tend to be just like the, the regular application uh, where you'll have to turn in your transcripts, uh, your SAT, ICT scores. Sometimes you have a essay requirement, application fee, and English proficiency exam, TOEFL for international students. I mean, sharing my screen. So it's kind of something to think about because we talk about a lot of things. You want to apply for the school and you want to apply for the department. So this is kind of like a chart that you can think about. So you can put down the name of the institute here, like I put Kaiser here, and then you can just hyperlink in case you don't know how to put hyperlink. Usually it's kind of like a small thing there. And then you put down the deadline for each school. So you can keep track on like each school, do you meet the deadline? Of course, we want to do it like as early as possible. And then usually the SAT score for each school, they have like its individual code because nowadays we can do it um, online. So just make sure that you have the code. So whenever you like get the SAT score, you're satisfied with, you can just send a code to all the school that you want to apply. And then the fees, of course, is usually non-refundable. It doesn't matter if you get any or not, you just have to pay the fees. It's good to keep track. And the requirements here, it can always be more. But then nowadays, most of the college, they just have like a online system. Basically, you go into the website and then you fill out all the information. So I, here, I only put the link, but you can also just this out, say like if they want a 500 word essay, and maybe you can use that essay in like to apply for a different school, things like that. And then contact info. This one is like the direct contact you have. Like sometimes it's like you had the chance to visit the school and then like the, the counselor in there, you might want to make sure that you get their names and their email address or phone numbers. And then when you write an email, it's important that you try to address to a specific person. And this side is the similar thing for the department application. So obviously now we're applying for the music department and then you will go into like, so like Kaiser is a university and then now the music department, then that's kind of like separating most of school, you have to apply for it in two different places. And then also they have like application fee and then uh, contact information. 
usually there's a, in the bigger school, there's like admission person, or you can also contact like the teacher you want to study with. And you can just contact them directly. And personally, I really recommend that if you are going to a school, it's good that you meet up with um, your lesson teacher. It's kind of like, yes, they are auditioning you to go into this school, but also you can get the feel of, oh, if this is a teacher that you want to like study with, because um, private lesson, you see your teacher like every week, once every week for four years, that's a long time. So you want to make sure that you guys are compatible. And then other information, obviously you can just put anything you want there, like a tuition or anything you would like to consider, or like, it's just, a way to this form is just for you to keep track on like where are on your application and once you're done you can check it on the checkbox so it's kind of like the way to organize it and then you can make sure that you are on track and it's a good time since like I would recommend that if you are going to 12th grade like in senior like before the um, basically the summer if you're going to senior next year you better start now because it takes a lot of time and then once you we go into session again you will just be like overwhelmed with classwork and your band and everything else and with your life so like the summer is a good time to start looking and then try to lay these things out and then talk with your parents and then try to talk to your teachers and then someone you trust and then talk about your options explore your options and then just try to figure out what you want so you can be prepared um, and some of these things were mentioned by Dr. Chang um, definitely want to have a private lesson with the applied teacher. It is scary the amount of students that I hear from that have never taken a lesson with the teacher that they could potentially be studying four years with. Um, the, obviously, the, you're, you want to look for a university that has you know, an overall well-rounded education, but the apply teacher is such a huge component of that um, so depending on the teacher and the university um, some teachers offer free lessons for prospective students um, some charge a normal rate uh, which is comparable to their degree level and stuff like that so that's a, a especially if you have to pay for it something that you want to be aware of and save up for you want to make sure that you get to the campus and do a campus tour, see what kind of facilities are there, uh, what kind of performance facilities, um, what kind of dorm student life if you're looking to live on campus. Um, if you get a chance, speak with some current music students so you can kind of get an idea of what their experience at that school is, especially if they uh, are local and you can kind of relate to them or um, if you're like looking at one of these out of state schools, you can kind of get a, a better idea of why they they went to that school. Because especially those bigger conservatory style schools, uh, a lot of people travel distances to go there. Um, and if during like the campus tour, if you have the possibility to watch an ensemble rehearsal and meet with the directors, that's going to be another huge benefit to your decision making process. Um, but like I said. Definitely, definitely, you need to have a, a private lesson with the applied teacher. Uh, meeting the directors is, is a, a little less important, but you can kind of get a, a feel for the ensemble. We're just watching them rehearse, seeing the director interact with the musicians on the stage. So some extra skills that you need as a music major. Um, and I was lucky enough to have a band director that kind of prepped us and told us things that we needed to do before entering music school. So uh, it, any piano that you can learn now, huge benefit. Um, you need to be able to, and when you get into college, you're going to have sight singing, oral theory. So that's basically being able to sing melodies without having um, all the pitches written out for you, just having like a starting pitch, being able to write down melodies by getting the starting pitch and then being able to understand how all those notes relate to one another. Uh, and then obviously, if you're going for music education, you're going to need to know secondary applied, you're going to need to know all the instruments. Uh, so I was lucky enough when I was in high school that my primary instrument is clarinet, and I learned trombone in 
high school for marching band and jazz band. So that already kind of like set me ahead when I got to college because, you know, I, I already had the, the clarinet chops and then I had three years of brass chops. So that made my life a lot easier. Um, and then I ended up doing baritone and marching drum corps. Um, so you want to find a school that spends a lot of time in secondary applied instruments. Um, some schools are, uh, have just like a woodwind method class and a brass method class. So then in those classes, you're learning the majority of the instruments in that course. So you get a couple weeks on an instrument. So even if you only have that woodwind class, I definitely recommend trying to like play some of these secondary instruments regularly because the better you can play these instruments, the better you will be a band director. That's definitely, definitely the case. Um, so they kind of related these two slides. So p those piano proficiency and the sight singing kind of related all deal with music theory, being able to play the chords and understanding chord structures. You know, a lot of students have some sort of theory in high school, um, but there's some, you know, free resources online, musictheory.net, and there's some free piano music as well. Uh, even if you get a simple piano keyboard and you learn a couple scales and play some easy songs because basically uh, depending on what kind of instrument you're playing um, uh, you said you I think you played tuba so um, you do have some finger dexterity obviously it's just learning the right technique and applying it choir uh, that was one thing that my band director in high school recommended if you're gonna do anything with music sing in the concert choir so so that allowed me to kind of work on my one singing chops, which is used in oral theory skills. And then, and it kind of puts you ahead because when you go for music education, you need to be able to teach band, choir, and strings. Yay, learning lots of things. So it's very easy to kind of get ahead if you learn a little bit of piano before school and you're singing in the choir as an instrumentalist. Uh, that's another thing that a lot of instrumentalists don't realize that they're gonna have to sing and play piano. They just think that, hey, uh, I play tuba. I'm just gonna play tuba when I get to college and, and then teach people how to make music. There's, there's many, many, many steps and many, many things above and beyond that. Nice seeing everybody. Well, thank you for joining the first session. Uh, make sure to kind of share with your friends, invite them out to the sessions because we're going to be going through J July uh, and everybody have a nice evening. Thank you.